And in this video, we look at um, a problem from our textbook uh, related to the chain rule. Okay, so this is section 3.4, problem number 57. Okay, and this is, you know, is a sneaky little problem if this is the first time you've seen it, so I definitely want to go over this one now. Okay, uh, we'll do, um, let's do problem, let's do part A of this problem, so three parts to it. Okay, the question is asking you, okay, that you're given some function h of x. Okay, and if you look on this plot here, they want you to use the picture to answer the question, given h of x is f of g of x, find h prime evaluated at 1. Okay, but notice that they have not given you on here there's no h of x function. They haven't given you in any information about h of x. They gave you information about two other functions, f and g, separately. Okay? So what you need to remember here is that h of x is a composition of functions. Okay? And therefore, if you take its derivative, h prime of x, which is also called the derivative with respect to x of the function h of x, that you have to do the chain rule because it's the derivative of the outer function, derivative of the outer function with respect to z, f of z, wherever you see the z, put in g of x, and then last step, multiply by the derivative of h with respect to x. Sorry, I ran out of, bit of, ran out of room there. Okay, so you have to break this into steps first. Okay, the derivative of h with respect to x, it's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. That's the shortcut way to write it. Okay, and then if they want h prime at 1, you're supposed to put a 1 everywhere. Okay, wherever you see the x, you're supposed to put a 1. Okay. Now, you need to work at this like you would kind of on a calculator. If you're going to do f prime of g of 1, you need to first know g of 1 and find g prime of 1. Notice, let's try to do these separately. Okay, g of 1 on this plot, g of 1 is about, sorry, g is the blue function, so let me keep going. g of 1 is the blue one. So we'll go to g of 1, and we'll say that's about 3. Okay, And g prime of 1, what does that mean? That means what's the slope of the tangent line to the function g? Right? So look at the tangent line. Function g is a line, so its tangent line should be easy to compute. It goes from the point 0, 4 to the point 4, 0, which means that the line has a slope of a uh, rise of negative 4 divided by a run of 4 is negative 1. Okay, so g prime of 1 is negative 1. So we know stuff about g of 1 and g prime of 1. Now we need to finish this problem. h prime of 1 is f prime evaluated at g of 1, which is 3. g of 1 is equal to 3. Then you need to multiply by g prime of 1, which was negative 1. Okay. So now you can see there's a separate second step to this problem. We need to find f prime at 3. So now I need to go to 3 for the input. 3 is here. f prime at 3 is the slope of the tangent line to the function f at the value x is equal to 3. And let's see, we're doing a rise of negative 4. We're dropping 4 and a run of 2. So h prime is a drop, a rise of negative 4 over a run of 2. So um, f prime, sorry, I shouldn't have written that quite there, should I? f prime of 3 is a rise of negative 4 over a run of 2. So it drops 4 units in a run as it moves to the right 2. So f prime of 3 is negative 2, so h prime of 1 is 2 times negative 1. 
sorry, negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2. And that is your answer to 57 part A. Okay. This problem has lots and lots of pitfalls. You have to remember the chain rule formula. You have to remember the meaning of the derivative is the slope and the tangent line. And then you have to know how to deal with the, the composition right here. I think this could be a, the meaning of this composition could be kind of a tricky step. So be on the lookout for problems like this. This is a, a typical book problem where they can try to make the problem more difficult by make, just making the problem simply look different. Okay, let's try another problem that I want to prepare you for. Uh, this is a problem from our textbook. I'm going to ask you to say, for example, find the derivative of this function. Okay. Now, it's in the chain rule section, so probably chain rule is going to be somewhere in this problem. But if you're asked in this problem to find the derivative of y with respect to t, okay, just keep in mind that the chain rule might not be your first step on a problem. The first step on this problem is to first recognize that it is the product of two functions. So it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. I know this step seems like simple to people just to write this down. Many people would do it in their head, but I would encourage people to write this step right here. Write it. And now that it's on paper, you can see that I need to multiply by t. I need to do the derivative of this e to the negative t squared. I'm going to punt on that one for a second because it seems like it's easier for me to take the derivative of t, which is just 1. Okay. And now you're looking and say, all I need to do to finish this problem is just do this one step right here. If I could finish that derivative, I'll be done, because I will have taken up all my derivatives, used all the derivatives there. But this derivative requires a chain rule. Okay. So hopefully you're seeing an e to the z function, and hopefully you're seeing an inner function, negative t squared. So we'll skip a step here, and the derivative of this part here with the chain rule is t multiplied by e to the negative t squared. That's the derivative of the outer, and then you plug the inner back in for z. And then the derivative of negative t squared is negative 2t. That's the derivative of your outer function the inner function, I'm sorry. So the final answer would be t squared with a negative 2t in front of it. t and 2t make negative 2t squared. e to the negative t squared plus e to the negative t squared. That would be one answer. Or you can notice that they both have an e to the negative t squared in common, so you can factor out the e to the negative t squared. This would be a reasonable answer for me. This would be a good answer on quizzes and tests. But, you know, sometimes Wiley Plus wants you to simplify, and so maybe this would be a better answer for Wiley Plus. Okay, and that ends this video. We'll do more chain rule problems in class.